Hi, this is David Brevik, the creator of Diablo and It Lurks Below, and you're listening to Budget Arcade. Hello gamers and welcome to Budget Arcade, a free-to-play gaming podcast to help you navigate through the growing realm of free-to-play games. I'm Scott. My name is Jeff. I'm Elliot. And welcome to episode number 45. Just to recap, we play a free-to-play game each week and then we rate and review it. Elliot, what was this week's game? We played Final Fantasy Brave Exvius. This is a free-to-play role-playing game developed by Alum and published by Square Enix for iOS and Android devices. Uh, This is a spinoff of the Final Fantasy series. Uh, the game marks the first collaboration effort between Square Enix and Alim. Um, and I know this is a little dated even for us right now, um, but as of August of 2019, the game had been downloaded over 40 million times worldwide. So there you go. Woo-hoo. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. People hit the download button. <laughs> yes. Repeatedly download. I had never download. heard of this game until download. last week. Oh my god! Download, <laughs> download. That's half the download. gameplay. Are you are download? You... Yeah. Oh, that's, I see. That's a new doing. game mechanic, right? Yeah, it yeah, is. I'm a... kidding. Gameplay. <laughs> that I mean, if we just say download, does that cover the game mechanic? That's just how you play it, right? It, well, pretty it covered much. about yeah, about most of the time I played it. So what Scott's referring to is, is when you boot up the game. And like a lot of mobile games, you download a a little bit and then you kind of test it out. And then if you want to keep going, you download more. But this game, like every level you go into, you have to download something. So technically not gameplay, but something to point out that there's just a lot to download here. Yeah. I'm curious, Scott, how, how download, how much did this end up taking up in space on your phone at the end of the week? Oh, I didn't, you know, hold on. Let me see if I can even check that because i started playing on my my iphone but there was so much downloading that i was afraid i was going to run out of storage Mm -hmm. so i switched to my ipad after the second day just because i was like oh i have plenty of room there and so i didn't quite it wasn't as much as i it felt like i was doing but it, it just everything every time after everything it's like oh here's another download constantly all right, 2.32 gigabytes is that's, what it's currently sitting at. That's pretty hefty, especially for a game that looks like it does. All right, let's jump into gameplay. Yeah. Oh, we were already in gameplay. Oh, we were? Okay, hey, welcome to gameplay. Um, so the game looks like a lot of mobile games. It takes certain genres and strips away as much as possible. And so what you have with Final Fantasy X Machina is... A um, <laughs> that was good. A RPG battle, a JRPG battle system, and nothing else. You don't yes. explore an overworld map. You don't have towns. It doesn't have the well, charm of. You do have towns, but that's my a little later in the game, and I get, they're uh, very yes. limited. It's very limited. And I, what I'm more thinking of is like when you play a classic Final Fantasy or Dragon Quest game. How you start in a town, you're a little boy, yeah. and you say, oh, it's the world's ending, you need to go save it. And you go from village to village, and you, you know, grind well, and level you up. You do, in this one, you do start out as a young man who has daddy issues. So, there is that. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, so how about how about that first cutscene, though? The first cutscene was pretty sweet. Was it worth I, the 20-minute download? No. I don't. I don't even think I saw it. I must have skipped through it. Oh, it was it was actually pretty decent looking. Yeah, Ooh. it was like very well done. It was like amazing graphics. It was really nice, and it felt very Final Fantasy esque. And a lie yeah. because nothing else of the game was like that. Well, that's like when they remade the Final Fantasy games for um, PlayStation. They had these really awesome cinematics, and then just kind of sixteen bit graphics underneath. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but basically, the the gameplay of this is a battle screen like you would expect in a classic 16-bit Final Fantasy game. And it's sort of split into two sections. The top section shows your characters and the enemies as they battle. And the bottom shows little blue squares with your moves. And you tap these moves. Or you can slide to select yeah, different which... spells. I kind of liked that. I thought that was kind of pretty innovative for, you know, a touchscreen RPG yeah. menu-wise. Yeah. I, I was my, kind of impressed. My only problem with that was I didn't find, like, you know how usually you can, like, set it to, like, block or, you know, not attack? Mm -hmm. I, I found that I could only attack every time. Like, there was no, like, I couldn't pick a character and not attack with them or, yeah. like, you know, defend or whatever. Well, uh, maybe I missed that mechanic, but I, I didn't find that ability to do It's really all. about chaining, though, too, right? Like, you're trying to make chains for bigger for bigger damage. Yeah, well, if you... I think that the only way to really chain is just to repeatedly tap all of your characters in a line, and then they all attack, like, consistently, one right after the other, and that was considered a quote-unquote chain. Well, and this is another one of those games, like Pokemon Quest, like some other game that I've since stricken from my memory that we played recently where you can just <laughs> tap the auto button. Oh, the might and magic game where mm, you don't, you're not even yeah. really required to play the game. Um, no. And I think that I, to be fair and to, to let everyone know up front, I didn't really give this game what I would consider a fair chance because once I got to those mechanics and I saw what the game was, and this just felt like something I'm going to auto play and just mash the buttons, tap the screen, tap, 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 and let it play. I, I just kind of was fed up with this style of game of just games that aren't games because they are trimmed down and stripped down to be on mobile. And granted, like JRPGs aren't like necessarily heavily on gameplay, but you walk around the town and there's there's more to do than just the fights that strip that are like these that are almost nothing. They look nice though. Like the attacks look nice and the spells look nice and that that's yeah. They're the the attacks. I mean, I honestly I enjoy the the gameplay of the fighting mechanics, but there was like there's so much more into this game that I didn't really even get into. Like there's a crafting section where you can craft weapons and all that, and I didn't even really touch that yet. Like there's you can get friends on the game and that's an extra party member. So your party consists of up to six characters. And the way that you get these other characters is the gotcha system, which we've experienced in multiple other mobile games. And, you know, I'll talk more about that in the paywall, but you got your two main characters and then you can add up to three other characters that you own yeah, and then a I think that's right. Something like six that. character that you can recruit from a list of characters that come up of players. I don't even know where this list even generates, but it's like other players. And then at the end of the battle, you can befriend one of those people if you want to. And if they accept your friend request, you can use them on a consistent basis whenever you battle. No, um, I know because I've talked with Elliot about this before on like on Neo Retro Video Game Disco, but um, I think nice you are the there. JRPG guy of the three of us. I know Scott's played a couple, but I how played do, a lot. Yeah, how do you feel about this? Is is coming from it from a Final Fantasy point of view? I and, mean, and... I I really don't dislike the gameplay here. It is a little simplistic. I thought the way they dealt with the menus and the touchscreen. Gameplay wise was was fine. I actually kind of liked it. I I wouldn't mind. I've played some of the old Dragon Quest games that they ported onto iPhones, um, and they just feel clunky with the touch screen. But this mm -hmm. doesn't feel clunky gameplay wise. It feels clunky in a lot of other ways. A lot of other ways. Um, I didn't really play with the crafting system a lot, but it also seems pretty complex overall. So I think this is one of those games that like a lot of thought went into it and they are constantly ad adding stuff to it. Um, but it's like just like enamored by all this other bloatware that kind of like really bogs down the gameplay. I, I frequently would find myself turning the game on, having to download something, walking away and then forgetting that I was going to go play. Mm -hmm. So the gameplay is a little forgettable in that sense, too. And, I mean, I, I love old-school turn-based RPGs. I've played just a metric crap ton of them. 
So I oh gosh. I so just... speaking of that, the I think the first or second day I was playing this game, I was at work playing at lunchtime. Okay, pulled up and it came up with one of those numerous downloads. And I'm like, okay, this is fairly hefty download. And I started the download, and it was going kind of slow. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to run down to the uh, gas station next to my work, which is down the hill from where I work, not very far away. I think it took me maybe like 15 minutes to go and get a coffee and come back, and it was only at like 90%. Yeah, it was a slow download even on wi- on good Wi-Fi for me too. Oh, yeah, 5G Wi-Fi at my work, and that thing was like trolling slow. It was ridiculous. You know, there's a subreddit though for this pay for this game too, and it, it seems relatively active. So there there seems to be a big enough following for this game, and they like I said, there's they're constantly adding stuff. There's a Christmas thing going on right now. So yeah, I think that's kind of interesting, like about mobile games, because there always tends to be some sort of following that these games hit, and I think it's maybe because they land in the hands of people who don't maybe don't play games in other ways that yeah. maybe their phone is their their primary gaming device and so that would be interesting to see how many of that actually turns into people who like your traditional final fantasy experiences and how many just want something to play on the crapper yeah, yeah. this well i mean it, it it makes sense because you know it's pretty expensive to buy a console and then mm-hmm. have to pay for games on a regular basis Whereas you're going to buy a phone anyways, a lot of times a smartphone, Mm -hmm. and that that ability to download these games and not have to initially pay for them, it's got to be a pretty big draw. Yeah, well, and that's And that's why companies go free to play, is they want as many people to have their hands on their game as possible. And you look at like the Battle Royale landscape and why Fortnite kind of creamed everything is it was the first one to have that free to play absolutely uh, you know experience cuz it was PUBG which you needed to pay $30 to get into yeah. and then a- anybody yeah. who wanted to on any device basically could play Fortnite so yeah well and see the thing with PUBG is originally it was on PC and it was free to play mm-hmm. because it was in the betas and then as soon as it was done being in beta, they started charging for it. Which I'm fine with, how, whatever price model you want to use. But I think you definitely get that larger player base when you go free to play because that barrier for entry is so low. Yep, totally right. So overall gameplay wise, I don't think this falls very close to traditional RPGs. Like you said, there's no exploration involved, which is kind of a big part of old school RPGs for sure. Yeah, and that's kind of the part, like, I'm not a big old school RPG thing, but I liked that part. I liked exploring the overworld. I liked going on an adventure. And when you take that element out, and I know, like, I don't know if you've ever played any of the Etrian games, there is no overworld. You just pick from a menu where you want to go and you go there. And it's like, it kind of takes that appeal that it it takes you out of the game a little bit. Because the so much of the being submersed in the game is walking through that overworld you know going through a forest and seeing different types of creatures and i kind of wish it was here yeah i do too i would play a traditional let anybody listening hit me up at jay with a good traditional jrpg to play on mobile that you know works in that way doesn't have to be free to play just something good Um, because i wouldn't mind trying one oh yeah even though you know it doesn't have that traditional jrpg feel with no overworld and all that the storyline is actually pretty decent and i actually started to read the story in this compared to some of the other games that we played where i was just like okay skip 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 i'm not really interested in the story this one actually yeah well not even dr mario it was one of the other gotcha games that we played uh one of the ones the one, no, it was Nintendo one of the ones from uh, Nintendo. Yeah, it was one of the other Nintendo ones. Oh, yeah. But, like, I Final, kept skipping... Or not Final Fantasy. Dragalia. Yeah. Fire Emblem? Yes, Dragalia. Dragalia, Dragalia Lost. Lost. Like, there I didn't... Is. That story didn't even, like, appeal to me when I started. And I was like, yeah, skip, skip, skip. Whereas this one actually has a decent storyline. But, I mean, that's, you know, traditional Final Fantasy games. They're all about the story. Yep. And I think that's because Square's had such a hand in this and it being a uh, final fantasy game that they do have that storyline hey wall all right so there was what 
two different currencies that I remember seeing, sure. or three actually. Yeah, three. There was there was the lapis, which was used to get your basically your gotcha poles here. Which we haven't talked about machine. the gotcha pulls. They you can get random characters from all kinds of games. There's like Tomb Raider, okay. Kingdom Hearts, Secret really? of Mana. Not only that, get this. I this was on their Wikipedia. You can literally get multiple forms of Ariana Grande and Katy Perry. Oh heck yeah! Okay, I'm back <laughs> I in. Like that's I'm, that hold is just on. crazy. Redownloading. Because as soon as I can play as Weird Al, it's over. (laughs) What would his uh, attack be, Jeff? I'd have an accordion, and when he'd squeeze it, it would make hand fart noises. (laughs) (laughs) That is something I do like. Like, to not take itself too seriously where you can have these sort of of out-of-context things. I like that. Yeah, I did too. That's pretty cool. I, I I didn't delve that deeply into it to see that, but that's pretty funny. Um... When you guys were playing and you you were forced to do the gotcha system, what was your first character pulled? Did you what what level did you pull the first time? My first I one was know. a seven star. I got okay, like a so max you got character. The, uh, yeah, so did I. So I guess that first character every time is going to be that max level. It was max level. It was a rainbow star and like had five stars. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so that was every time. That was the first time for everybody, I, I guess. Yeah, it probably is. Yeah, to get you to think if you put money in, you're going to get that every time. But Yeah, so as the the week progressed, you also get, um, like, you pick up uh, summoning tickets as well. Yeah. And you can use those in place of using your lapis. I think I had a few of those, and I actually used those. And honestly, I pulled quite a bit of good characters. I pulled a couple of gold characters, which was uh, four stars, um, but they were all level ones. And then I pulled another five star rainbow like a rainbow thing and she wasn't maxed but she was still a very strong character so i mean this is probably one of the better gotcha systems that i've encountered thus far because i think it was i think i pulled like four or five of the gold stars and then the one or the other and then a bunch of three stars i think uh the fire emblem game has had the best gotcha system to me so far the most balanced i i found but this one was not far off. Yeah. And for those that don't know, a gotcha system is like a, what do you call it? A, a slot machine almost where you just get random draws of characters or skins or things like that. And in this case, it's characters. When we would go to the grocery store as a kid, we they had those machines by the exit. And I used to call them quarter machines because they took quarters. Mm-hmm. But it's just, those are gotcha machines, essentially. That's the real world yeah. equivalent. So it's like that. You're just randomly pulling something. Like a slot machine. It's almost like what I said made sense. Yeah, but the gotcha, like, there actually are gotcha machines. No, it, that's true. Yeah. I remember those. Does it, is it an acronym for something? I don't remember. Let's not, let's not investigate. Yeah, let's not let's sound keep too going. stupid. Let's, let's ignore <laughs> that and not try to get into the origin <laughs> of the word gotcha. How do you feel about Batman movies, Jeff? You weren't here for that week. Uh, I did listen, and uh, I don't want to get into the discussion of best and worst bruce wayne slash batman uh however i am partial to adam west uh he's amazing we didn't even bring him up i know that's where i would have gone with it but also kevin conroy which scott said yeah it's kevin conroy yeah yeah i mean when we're talking about paywall here there's not it's pretty standard right it's pretty standard the prices are pretty standard to you see most most games that are similar to nature to this. And I think it was what you could purchase. The lapis was the main thing that you could purchase. Yeah. Okay. But you could, of course, always earn uh, as well. I don't see that you would have to spend any money in this game ever. But, you know, you've got those people who are going to wail it anyway. Yeah, and there was daily login bonuses, like several. So I, I felt like you were there was enough to, to keep you satisfied if you're playing not, in, infrequently. <laughs> replayability all right so there was there's quite a bit of replayability in this game just because of the fact that they are updating this constantly they've got a lot of special events going on um as far as the main story is going though i don't think there's probably very much replayability other than attempting to get all of the um so when you do a level there's different things that you can achieve 
when you beat it. Um, some of them are like, you know, cast a fire spell, cast a blizzard spell, or, you know, kill a specific enemy with magic or use a limit break to kill an en- a specific enemy, stuff like that. And I mean, that would be the only replaying of levels that you would really do. Or leveling up other Although characters, you... too. Yeah, yeah, or the grind of leveling up other characters. But for that, that's that's the extent of probably the replayability on this game. Because we didn't talk in gameplay, but each character has like a, an element, right? They're like one of several elements, right? Like fire, earth, lightning, ice, yes, that kind of thing. So like, certain things are... there's a dark element. Let's see, uh, eight of them. Fire, ice... Water, lightning, earth, wind, light, and dark. <laughs> Brooding. Yeah. And I believe there was a PvP section as well, but I didn't even get into that yet. I didn't look at that either. Yeah, I don't even know what the mechanics of the PvP section was either. Yeah. So I've decided that I'm going to retire the... There's stuff to replay, but do you want to replay it? Because that's really not the point. Is there stuff to replay? Yes. It, we're just going to leave it at that. If you like it, there's stuff to do. Yeah, and that's basically what we're getting at whenever we go over the replayability. You know, it's not one of those games that you play once and there's really nothing left to do after that. Yep. You're right. Judgment. All right, so at the end of each episode, we decide if a game deserves our seal, which is our general thumbs up or thumbs down, requires a two-thirds vote to be approved. Um, I... I actually enjoyed the gameplay of this. The I guess he's going it did first. feel very Final Fantasy esque. Yeah, but I'm not going to give this my seal. It, it's Ooh. just I, I'm really getting tired of these gotcha games. It was slightly enjoyable, but the downloading of it was just so absolutely ridiculous that I, I don't recommend wasting that much space on your phone. So this is a no for me. Uh, Jeff, how about yourself? So I'm going to go back to when we used to rate games and then give it a thumbs up or thumbs down. Remember, like in the early days, we used to give something a five-star rating and then give it a a seal of approval or not. I'm going back to that. Five stars. Ariana Grande. Thumbs down. (laughs) This game sucks. And the reason I'm saying that is basically what Scott said. I'm sick of this format. I'm sick of games that aren't games that don't actually require you to play them. And I got so demoralized when I opened this game and to see that it was another one of those games that I texted Scott and I said, please, let's play a real game next week. So this is not a, getting my seal, but you can play a Ariana Grande, which is amazing. All right, Elliot. So I think the gameplay here is fine, almost enjoyable at parts, um, but Ooh, it's almost. just so greatly hindered by the constant need to download something and update. It's absolutely terrible it's the first game i think i've played like this where i was so turned off by having to constantly update the game um i thought the menus also weren't necessarily the best they're just like again there's a lot of menus for a really small screen i playing on my ipad it wasn't that bad but i can't imagine playing on my phone those menus being really annoying so uh, i'm not giving it my seal for all the same reasons that everyone else said and you might be listening and you might be thinking how bad can the downloads be? It's like everything you do in the game requires some data to be downloaded. And it's Constant. not even an exaggeration. It's it is, all the time. It is unbelievable. Not to mention you have to be constantly connected to the internet for this game. Yeah. Right. Woo! I hate that crap too. Yeah, it was like connecting was another loading screen, loading, connecting, downloading. It was, yeah, yeah. Ridiculous. There is a uh, spinoff that just came out of this that's a tactical spinoff, so like a Final Fantasy uh, Tactics version. Just released in Japan, so coming to America soon. No, so. it's not. We should just play Fire Emblem again. I don't but. think Coconut Wizard got his commentary in in time. He said he was going to put one in, but he never did. So we don't have any listener commentary this week. I can't do a very good Tony impression. You know what other impression you can't do well? Oh, that's not what I've heard. Uh, by who? A Tessa? lot of people. She's no. biased. <laughs> Who's a lot? How come I didn't see this? A lot of people. My our, my boy Danny K loved it. I didn't say whether he loved it. Did he think it was good? Reach Get out to me on Twitter, Danny. Danny. I don't Get think he did. Oh, he did. 
No. I know. I know. I know my boy. Danny. Stop pretending that you're in with these podcasters. All right. <laughs> no one's impressed. Who are these other podcasters? That's what I'm wondering. Stop bringing them up, name dropper. <laughs> All right. So just because Jeff was so disheartened, Jeff's keeping in to pick this week's game. Heck yeah. So one of the other times I picked a game, I picked a game called Brogue, an old school roguelike. Well, I'm picking another one. It's called Tales of Magi All. It's free on their website. There's a premium edition on Steam, but you can get the free one. It's got tons of content. Oh, wait. Premium edition Sorry, is also thought, relatively cheap, so... Right. Hold on. So actually, next week we are interviewing somebody. Sorry. Okay. Oh, spoilers then. So you have two weeks to play Tales of Magi L. Uh, that's, uh, I don't know how to spell it, but if you put Tales of M-A-J, it'll shoot them up in whatever your, your yeah, search engine. E-Y-A-L or something like that. It is a roguelike that, that initially was called Tales of Middle Earth, but due to copyright reasons, they had to change it to Magi L. And uh, it's graphical roguelike, so for those that found Brogue to be a little too difficult to get into, I think this might um, suit you a little better. Yeah. So next week, we're going to interview Ronnie Pascal, which is, he doesn't really have anything to do with the gaming industry. He's actually a comedian. He's a what? he was interested in coming on. He's a comedian. Oh, okay. Well, you better have some good jokes, like me. <laughs> Are you saying nope. you're a good joke? Nobody? Okay, we'll just move on then. You guys leave me hanging so much. It's just it's really so easy to do. I love it. Because I know you're just looking for it. Shut you, up, you Elliot. Just, you Shut just up. played it up so well. Shut your mouth. You just put the golf, the golf ball right on the tee. And Keep my mouth the, out of your driver. name. driver. All right, thank you for joining us wherever you listen. We ask that you <laughs> leave us a right favorable <laughs> review. So if you enjoy the show. <laughs> defeated. If you two are also defeated, join Budget Arcade. Uh, I think we lost Scott. Uh, but I'll just roll. Nope, he's here. Okay. Yeah, you can follow us on our social medias. We're on Twitter and Instagram at Budget Arcade. We have a website, www.budgetarcade.com. We're also on Facebook, facebook.com slash Budget Arcade. Be sure to hit us up there. You can send any hate mail to show at budgetarcade.com. Music is provided by Stimage, and you can download his music at metroidmetal.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen, and game on. Mm-hmm.